It's Saturday, and Saturday is maintenance day, and I got three tanks, and yes, I need to do water changes on all those tanks, but I'm having individual problems, different problems, with each one of these tanks. Tank one, the Fluval M60. The biggest problem I'm having in this tank is the brand new anemone is dead. You can see here, you see here, all the spines fell off. Don't know why, don't know why. I was reading online, oftentimes it's high nitrates. <laughs> well, my nitrates are one, so that's clearly not it. I, I don't know why, because in the other tank right here, it's doing just fine. So, you know, sometimes there's just livestock loss. So obviously this urchin is not gonna help with the green hair algae. Problem number two in this one is still Still green hair algae, and I have more cleanup crews coming. I added some in here somewhat recently, but they're not gonna tackle this. They're, they're not gonna be able to tackle that. So I'm gonna have to go in here and manually remove as much as I can. And so I'm just gonna use my fingers that are gloved and then like a bucket of fresh water and just pull it out and put it in the fresh water and, 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 and just go back and forth. My nitrates are running about one. My phosphates are running undetectable, but I'm not gonna stress about it because other than that, the tank's doing fine. So I, I think what happened is I have not added any sort of cleanup crew addition in six months till last week. As die off occurred, I didn't replace it. So look at that, look at that valiant little guy trying to help me out here, but there's no way a few hermit crabs are gonna be able to take care of all that. So I'm gonna have to help him out a little bit. All right, let's get to work. Man, that Vortec is just nasty. That's like two weeks worth of growth. It's just growing on there like, ugh, green hair algae everywhere. So I think I need to take that out, scrub that off, and then turn off all my flow, and then just start pulling out that green hair algae. trying to do right now is just pull out the biggest pieces of hair algae and then I'm just putting them in this bucket with fresh water to get my fingers clean and I'm just trying to give my cleanup crew a chance to catch up it's extremely tedious but essential and I, I shouldn't have let it got this bad but I mean I've had worse before and since I don't really want to use any sort of cleaning product this is really my only option is just to stay on top of it until my cleanup crew can catch up. And I have some more snails, some more hermits coming. And another thing I'm gonna do is probably pick up the snails that I have, like here's one right here, right? An asteroid snail right here, see? And I'm just gonna place it right on top of, of the green hair algae and encourage them to eat the newly trimmed areas. So i probably be at this for another 30 minutes, so we'll be back. All right, well, here's the damage after round one. You can see, I mean, I got water everywhere, but that's okay. That's that's okay. I got a lot of the algae off. Not all the algae off, but I got a lot of the algae off. Here, let me let me actually show you. All right, here's here's how much I got off. Let's see. Uh, it's actually not bad for such a what small tank. Doing? Sorry, that's my stepson in the background. So yeah, that's that's actually pretty good. So I'm hoping that we've given the tank enough of a head start. We'll see, I gotta clean it up now. It's a weekend, so the kids aren't in school, so you're gonna hear the kids in the background. This room stinks after cleaning this tank of the green hair algae. It just reeks of algae, you know, that, that kind of nasty algae smell that you get in your tank sometimes. That's what it smells like, but I got a lot of it off. So let me turn you around, show you what I got off. I mean, you probably can't even tell, but I got a ton of that algae off. I mean, I didn't get all of it off, obviously, but huge clumps of it, and there's still huge clumps of it, and that's, that, that's fine. I mean, that's just how it's gonna be. It's gonna take me several weeks to really get rid of all of it. I think I need to remove the urchin. 
uh, so he doesn't just rot in there because I mean, clearly dead, if not completely dead, then definitely dying. I use these Camor X1 dosing pumps and I put about five to seven milliliters of calcium and alk in a day. And that seems to work pretty well. My calcium somewhere around 440. My alkalinity is around 7.8 to 8. But I gotta check that every week because I have to make adjustments every week. This tank is completely different issues. Not hair algae, although I'm sure it's coming. But I mean, of course we're having anemone issues. Why wouldn't I have anemone issues? And then the water is just always cloudy and the water is always cloudy. Let's see if I can catch him. He never lets me catch him. The water is always cloudy because of this guy right here. He is working so well and he looks quite chubby and I'm super happy that he's chubby. But man, he works so well that this tank just always has a haze. Except at nighttime when he's sleeping, it clears up. First thing in the morning, it actually looks okay. Let's see if I can show you the anemone issues. So this has like five anemones in it, I'd say at this point. This is the newest addition right here. It's like a watermelon something or other. And it's new and it's not very green. It's supposed to be green, but it's probably because shipping. And it's probably a little stressed out because my light's here. The par right there is probably pretty close to 275, which is probably quite a bit more than this anemone is used to. These anemones right here are old ones that I've had for a while, and they were for the longest time over in this tank. So they're kind of used to my water parameters and used to having some higher light. So they're doing okay. You can see that little baby one. I don't know if it's gonna pull through or not, but I hope they do okay. They've settled right there. But the biggest problem I'm having is with the green bubble tip that I got a while ago. I don't even know if I can show you. There we go. Oh, can you see that? Can you see how awful that is? Look at that. Oh, these? Oh, this is okay. Right there, look. I'm not gonna touch anything, because that's what I swore I would not do, is I wouldn't touch a thing. Look at that though. I'm guessing too much light. Not gonna touch her, she looks terrible. Looks like she's dying, but I'm not gonna do a thing. That's what I declared I would not do, so. I'm hoping that that anemone will eventually right herself. This tank has been struggling with low nutrients after struggling with high nutrients. I'm only running a little carbon on here right now. My nitrates are at one, my phosphates are at zero. So I'm just upping my feeder here. I'm feeding four times a day, two rotations using this automatic feeder. And then I'm also feeding frozen food every single day. Look how healthy this one is. This one is super healthy, especially compared to the one that was dead. So who knows, maybe this one was just a healthier one and the other one wasn't. Oh, guess. There we go. She's got a little hanger on there. She's been working around the tank just fine, so I hope, hope she's gonna be okay. Water testing, water changing, and then that's it for now. Well, it's not bad, the whole thing took 10 minutes. This is my not so glamorous method here. I get take all my water change water into here, and then I just use an MJ1200 pump, and I put it down the sink. That's all I have. I don't even have a utility sink here at this house, so that's my studio right there. So I just wheel it down, and I wash everything here. I try to keep all of the kitchen stuff separate from the aquarium stuff, and I'm I'm pretty successful doing that because you obviously don't want to mix the two, but it's definitely kind of gross on clean days, clean up days for sure. Get some of these pieces of algae that I took out of that tank. Look at this. Look at the size of some of these pieces. Ugh, I hate this algae. Like green hair algae. And I are sworn enemies. Look at all that. Oh, so gross. It smells awful. Ugh. Oh well. I will get control of it in the next few weeks or months. Okay, we've got two of the tanks done, water chain. The last tank is a 40 gallon breeder. It's the QT tank. The biggest issue I'm having right now, I don't remember, but I, I had dinos and the dinos are gone, which is fantastic. They There's still a little bit of dinos left, like like on the macro algae in the sump, but that's it. And I just remove them, pull them out, and it seems to be just fine. But the biggest issue I'm having is a phosphate issue. My nitrates are at one, but my phosphates are at like 0.3. Right? And that's even with a huge amount of macro algae. So I realized that like yesterday, one of the problems I was probably having is that I hadn't trimmed back the macro algae in a while. So I just don't know if there was any room for it to grow. So I trimmed some of that macro algae back, pulled out some of those dinos with it. And so now I just need to do a water change. My calcium and alkalinity levels have been fine. I'm dosing it with using this like 
Polish doser called Aquatrend. But the other day I noticed this puddle on the floor and it was because my cats had uh, bitten through the line and so I had to repair that, which was super annoying. But I'm just not getting the coral growth that I want. I'm really getting a tiny, tiny, teeny amount of coral growth. So I'm just gonna keep monitoring it. I'm gonna do, I don't know, a big water change, 15, 20 gallon water change, try to bring those phosphates down and maybe have to clean off some of the coral frags. So I'll look at the coral frags. I'll take you around in a second to see if there's like any news and salary going around them. If not, we should be good to go. down here I got jumped by an antheus which is awful because antheuses are just notorious for not acclimating well so I'm gonna try to catch them over one sec look what else I found I hate bristle worms just because they gross me out I didn't know I had any bristle worms in there just look at how big that one is must have been just loving the detritus down there <laughs> it's so gross oh, okay Let's see if I can catch this guy might need something smaller. Hey, Jenny, could you help me real quick? Could you just tilt this? Okay. Got her. Go put her back. Oh, I hope she's okay. That was stressful. And I know Antheus do not do stress well. Oh, and that bristle worm. Oh, I hate them so much. Ugh. I heard already. Well, that's pretty much it. I mean, that was about three hours worth of work to do the water changes and all those to to clean up the massive algae over there. This clownfish harem tank was definitely the easiest, but it was kind of boring. I'm sorry, it was just kind of boring. I still need to water test, make some adjustments there, but really now I'm just waiting to keep working on the clownfish harem tank. Those 10 clownfish should be coming next week or the week after, as well as like 10 more anemones. So I'm kind of waiting on that. And then the only other real battle right now is just beating the green hair algae. So I have cleanup crew arriving next week, a whole bunch of crabs, a whole bunch of snails, and hopefully that will help since the sea urchin just died within like a day of putting them in there. Tune in next Tuesday to see the update. Maybe we'll have some fish by then. Maybe we won't, but maybe we'll have some fish. Maybe we'll have some anemones. It's gonna really transform the gallery as soon as we get all that taken care of. If you like this video, if you wanna see more like it, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to My First Fish Tank, and as always, be well, happy reefing. We'll see you next time.